All right, awesome. What's up, fellas? Let's uh, yeah, let's get rocking on uh, on session on session six. Uh, I want to jump right into it so we can finish so we can get to our questions. But um, let's start with how your baseball week was, visualizing all that kind of stuff, and then um, any like your number one pressing issue that uh, you'd want to talk about tonight before we uh, before we wrap things up. So Austin, type in type in your answer. Um, uh, Chris, you can start, and then we'll keep moving. All right. Um, all right. Uh, baseball week. Um, my games are actually canceled for this weekend. Rockford, we had too many players with injuries, so um, that was unfortunate. But. Um, I was able to take dry cuts. I wasn't able to go to a batting cage, but so it was a very relaxed week compared to the last couple. Cool, good. Um, and then one thing, if if anything, that you would uh, want to make sure we get to tonight. Um, being able to pick up off-speed pitches faster. Okay, great. Cool. All right. Um, who wants to go next? Anybody? No games. Who was that that just typed in? That was me. Um, cool. Now have any games? Hitting the cage quite a lot. Showcase this weekend. Awesome. How uh, how are you feeling about showcase and kind of your baseball shape right now? I've been hitting the cage a lot, and I feel pretty good with my swing. Good. Good. Uh, any uh, any one major topic that you'd want to talk about tonight before uh, we wrap wrap things up? Seeing the ball. Did you say seeing the ball better? Yeah, out of the pitcher's hand. Cool. Good. Good. All right, who else wants to share about their baseball week? And Brooksy, will you, will you send a quick note to Quinn and see if we can get him in here, please, or give him a call? Thanks. Um... Baseball week wasn't much, no games, uh, couldn't get in the cage. An issue would be coming out of the winter. Always had a bit of a slow jump back in. Yeah, for sure, Austin. I think um, everyone deals with that to a certain extent, and one of the biggest things that that we all can do is, is visualize and, and work on our um, toolbox swings in our head. And it's kind of, I don't know... Um, as hard as that can be and, and as frustrating as that can be to have actually like have to sit down and be disciplined enough to do that over and over, that will have a huge effect on um, on, on really getting back, uh, starting quickly. So it's, al it's almost giving yourself a, a spring training or a prep in your head um, before, you know, before you actually get there. So uh, going through our visualization stuff, visualizing your hitting routine, your toolbox swing, all those kind of things are, you know, are, are things you can do to, to help because really, you know, the reality is we're not going to get a whole lot of live, um, we're not going to get a, a lot of live on-field hitting and baseball playing until the season actually starts. So the only place we can do that was if you're in a cold weather environment. What's up, Quinn? Glad you're back. Yes. Um, you know, Everyone in a cold weather environment, the only baseball on field that you're going to be able to play is in your head. So learning how to how to do that and uh, and just getting better at that over the winter is going to help a ton. Um, cool. And then uh, I'm sorry, Gray Sweatshirt. Can you can you remind me your name one more time, please? Uh, I think Brooksy. How does he get it? How do you get the volume on? I don't think the volume is uh, is working. Can you 
Can you guys hear Mark? No. Can you hear me now? Bobby. Yes. Awesome. Yeah. Bobby, look at the uh, top right corner with the, uh, the icon, the gear icon. Click on that and then click on the different devices and see if, uh, if it works for you and just let us know. What about Quinn? While we're waiting. Yeah, Quinn, why don't you why don't you let us know how your baseball week was and if there's one thing um, that you'd want us to talk about tonight, what would that be? Um, I uh, I just had lessons, private lessons, and I pitched, but um, I want a better two strike approach. Great, Bobby. How about how about now? I I don't think I don't think we can hear I don't think we can hear you, Brooksy. Can you hear Bobby? No, I can't hear. Um, so Bobby, if you play, if you click on the gear, and then Bobby, say something else again. Sounds like he, there's an echo, so I don't I don't know what it is. We should be able to hear him. Maybe right. he could type it in. Yeah. Bobby, why don't you type in um, how your baseball week was and and what's one thing that that you want to address uh, tonight before you go. And while we're doing that, fellas, um, I want to go through and just ask everybody one more time. Um, what, how you, if you 100% have a in-game hitting routine that you feel comfortable with, at least starting out right now. Uh, we did the same thing last week, but this is, to me, this is the most important thing, um, that you guys leave here with a in-game hitting routine. You absolutely know what it is, and you feel confident that moving forward, um, you know, you you have a good base that you can build off of because as much good stuff as we've talked about over the last six weeks, having um, having a real solid in-game routine. Hey, what's going on, man? Um, yeah, but having a solid in-game hitting routine is is kind of the whole key of of, of this whole course and what we've been talking about. So if you don't have um, if you don't have that, or if there's any kind of holes in that, let us know, and we'll and we'll get to there to that in a second. But um, I do want to introduce this new guy over here. Um, this is Adam Eaton. E you changed shirts. I showered. I just got done working out when I got when I was starting to do all that uh, tech savvy stuff, so I showered real quick. Yeah, that'll make lots of people sweat. Um, <laughs> guys, this is. This is Adam Eaton. He's a uh, center field outfielder for the uh, Arizona uh, Diamondbacks. Lead off dude. Um, and e we actually got in a pretty, a pretty good um, debate last week about kind of philosophy of a lead off hitter. And I know different guys kind of kind of have different um, you know thoughts about either swinging at first pitch or taking pitch, especially to start the game. Can you kind of just share with us what your philosophy is? Uh, as a leadoff yeah, guy, yeah, I mean it is a uh, it's a tough uh, um, it's a tough position to be in because yeah you don't you don't want to swing at that first pitch and roll it over and then your number two hitter be mad at you you know it's a uh, or you know if you do get a base hit it's a good thing but it's only one pitch uh, I think that's one of the biggest things that I battle with on a day to day basis is to um, kind of uh, having a happy medium with it and I've always been an aggressive hitter. Um, being a smaller guy, which is usually leadoff hitters or smaller guys, you know, you always want to swing that first pitch. It's, it's the best pitch you'll see all game. Um, oh. Where'd you go? I'm here. We can hear you. Okay. And, uh, you know, that's uh, it's always been a difficulty for me just because, uh, I mean, you play for a lot of different teams. You play for a lot of different coaches and managers. I have different philosophies on it. But I think if you have a good balance um, that you trust – um, they're not going to say much because you're going to have success. You know, your numbers will, your numbers will play on any um, instance. So um, just find a good balance of it, you know. If there's a pitcher you haven't seen before 
or if there's a, a pitcher that you have seen, it will kind of dictate on what you're going to do. You know, go up there and swing at the first pitch. If you've seen this guy two or three times, he doesn't have much to beat you. You know, you can swing it in two strike count. Uh, if you do want to take, you know, this guy, like I said, if you want to see a few pitches, get the guys behind you a couple of good looks. And like I said, you're not afraid to hit with two strikes. Um, you can always go that route. Uh, as a leadoff hitter, though, I definitely would recommend being comfortable uh, hitting with two strikes. Um, that's always a big key for me in the big league levels um, to be able to hit with two strikes. It's always a, a Gibby, our manager, um, it always always brings it across my table is you can't be afraid to hit with two strikes uh, and as a leadoff hitter because you knew you to see a lot of pitches. But it's like I said, it's a catch-22. You always want to – that first pitch of the game is always the best pitch you're going to see, but at the same time you want to be a good teammate and have your other other guys behind you see good pitches. And, and like I said, you don't want to roll that ball over and, and for the rest of the team to be mad at you. <laughs> yeah, no, that's cool. Actually, Quinn, Quinn um, one of our guys was just asking, he's saying, you know, the biggest thing that he's – struggling with right now is two strike approach how did how did your mentality change with two strikes on you and what are you does that you know how, what does that look like in your head when that when you in that situation well i feel like mentally you have to make it you have to make a change mentally and you have to make a change physically um for my from my standpoint i always widen out a little bit and almost take my stride away because i want to see the pitch as well as i can um, and again, as leadoff hitters, most of the time we have some have some speed, and we want to uh, we want to use that speed and a two strike approach. Any way right. we can chop a ball, we can get a ball um, uh, in the five six hole. I mean, uh, Matt Williams, our third base coach, which is now the Nationals uh, manager, he always was a big guy on go to your go to. We'd work on MVP every day, uh, day in and day out. Your go to, and that was the five six hole. Getting jammed, he'd throw me. He'd, he'd speed up, slow me down with two strikes approach, even in BP, and he'd try to jam me, and my job was to flay it into the 5-6 hole. You know, if I made that shortstop take two steps to his right, um, that's a base hit. And you could do that with two strikes. Like I said, uh, uh, kind of uh, battling, uh, again, changing your mental approach. As I mean, 3-1, your, your approach is going to change with 3-1 to 0-2. Uh, you know, like I said, 3-1, uh, you're going to try to put in the gaps or you're going to try to hit the ball hard somewhere. And then 0-2, like I said, you're going to kind of bunker down and, and go to my go-to, which is seeing the ball deep and trying to uh, either fly it over the third baseman's head or the shortstop's head or hit a ground ball in the 5-6 hole. Yeah, dude, that's awesome. Um, last question, and we'll let you get back to watching the World Series. Thanks again for... <laughs> Thanks again for tuning in and, and uh, joining us. But um, a couple of guys were asking earlier about, uh, you know, one of the things they're working on is seeing the ball better, see, picking up off speed. Um, obviously, at the big league level, you have to pick the ball up right away or else you're done. Uh -huh. So is there, um, is there any tricks you use or, or uh, you know, what do you do to make sure you're seeing the ball right out of the pitcher's hand and recognizing pitches early? Sure. Um, I always use the, the saying, uh, um, concentrate on concentrating. I know it's kind of a weird, really weird saying, and it's like kind of doesn't make sense. But for me, I, I always take into every game. I, I it, You can get into the wall of, of ABs where it's just you go up there and you're just you try to get your foot down and you swing. You know, you want to make contact. But when I, when I go up there, I really try to concentrate on concentrating on that window. Like, uh, you want to see that pitch as early as possible. So you, that's, for me, I really, really try to concentrate on it as I'm hitting. I want, when I get up there, I'm saying, look at that window. I want to see the ball come out of his hand. I want to see the ball come out of my, his hand. And like I said, I, 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 there's many games where I'm feeling good, and I don't think that. But there's a lot of times, I think more times, um, where I really have to concentrate on seeing uh, the ball out of his hand and, and concentrate on that window. And, and the funny thing is the window is always changing. You know, guys have different arm angles, and, and they do different things. And you have to train yourself. To, again, concentrate. When you're going up and you're on the on-deck center circle and you see the pitcher, you're saying, now where is, where is this window at? Where do I want to pick up this pitch at? And then vice versa for the, if there's a guy in the pin that maybe come in, now as you throw a sidearm, you know, it's going to be a lot more difficult to kind of pick up that, that, uh, that window, and you got to concentrate on that. Um, another thing that I've picked up when I was actually at Miami of Ohio, where Franco went to went to school, um, we always did. Uh, you take you look at the the uh, top of the guy's cap, and uh, as soon as he starts to kind of shows his back pocket and his hip, um, about to deliver the ball, then you go to the window. 
Um, I think a lot of guys kind of get stale when they just stare at that window, stare at the window, and then all of a sudden the ball kind of surprises them. Yeah. Um, so that's always a good technique, too, is, again, that you can, some guys do the letters of the chest, um, the hat. You know, they do a, a couple of different things, but that's always something you can go to. Um, but, uh, yeah, there's – there's no better practice than, than just picking the ball up out of the window. Yeah, that's awesome. And, yeah, we, we talked a lot about that over the last couple of weeks and, you know, finding that window when you're in the on-deck circle so you know exactly what you're locked in on when you get there. And then, and then my biggest thing is batting practice. You know, it's so easy to go through the motion and not pick up that baseball. Yes. But if you're, if you're not doing it in batting practice, it's hard to really do it well in the game. Sure. Um, and, but, and if you, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but if you yeah. have good practice habits, it's going to go in the game automatically, and that's how you get in the zone quicker. You know, they always talk about getting in the zone. If you have good practice habits with BP, I mean, T work. If you're if you're sitting there at T, I mean, you don't really stare at the ball at T. If you're thinking window, 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 look at the window, and then you swing, it's going to come a second nature when you're in the game. You know, it's going to come that much easier if you can just practice that over and over again. It's going to give you a mental edge. Oh, for every other baseball player out there that, you know, doesn't do it. Any any edge you can get, take it, besides performance-enhancing drugs. <laughs> so. Good. I'm glad you cleared that up. Um, that, dude, that's so true, though. And, and the first time, like hitting off a tee, I mean, I think everyone here has hit off a tee as part of the regular workouts, but the first time you start looking, you know, down where the pitcher is and then, you know, start your swing like you'd be a game swing, it's not easy to hit the ball, you know, to hit the ball hard, and but but that extra effort, that discipline to train yourself to be as game like as possible while you're in practice, um, yeah, there's no doubt that makes it. Yeah, good. I mean, just the tracking, the head, the head motion of tracking that ball, and um, and again, I, I talked about concentrating on concentrating on concentrating is. Um, there's many times that you 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 get into the wall of the bats. I mean, you're maybe you're you're in the summer league and it's your 70th, 80th bat of the year or in the summer or whatever, and like I said, you get in there, and sometimes you don't even track the ball all the way in. You know, you get, get out of the wall of things. You don't even see it. Maybe you see it halfway. Maybe you see it a quarter of the, or two, three quarters of the way, but you really don't see it all the way in. And like I said, that goes back to practicing off the tee, your flips, even in batting practice. You know, there's a, there's a number of guys. If you if you watch MLB Network or you watch the World Series, and I, you see those guys taking batting practice. Uh, I know Shane Victorino, for one, you watch him. Uh, Votto is the same way. Their first couple rounds, they won't even look at the ball. You know, they they, they pick it. I'm guaranteed they're saying picking up at the window. They're going to pick up the window. They're going to track it all the way in, and they're going to swing, and they don't even watch it. You know, they're just working on that, staying down on the ball and making sure they see it. You know, it's uh, it, it seems like child's play, but you're never too big enough, I mean, or good enough, you know, to ever get out of those, those good practice skills. Yeah, that's awesome. And uh, I'll, I'll let you answer Quinn's question, um, were you always a center fielder, outfielder, or did you come into college as a shortstop? <laughs> I'm, I'm only laughing because Eaton's left-handed, but, but you can answer that. It probably every lefty's dream is to play shortstop at some point. Oh, I wanted to be a second baseman so badly, you know. <laughs> I love it. Um, but no, I, I'm too short to play anywhere else, so I've always, uh, I've always played the outfield. Um, and, uh, you know, I I would like to think I'm decently athletic, and I'm not a big thumper, so I've always tried to stay up the middle of the field um, with being center field, and and uh, that's the most fun. I, I, I think you cover the most ground. You're in charge of, of three guys, and you make the longest throws, you know, besides right field. Um, it's the, I really enjoy playing center field, but, you know, being able to be versatile and playing left and right field, um, it's always a good thing, you know. You want to play as many positions as you can. And if they stuck me behind the plate, you make you make do, you know. So, um, uh, like I said, I've always tried to play up the middle of the field, though, because that's where the most fun is, I believe. Absolutely. Um, go ahead, Chris. Ask, talk. Last, last. You, you got right. a question? Yeah, I'm, I got plenty of time. What's up? Thanks, dude. Um, are you a left-handed batter as well? I am. Yes. All right. Um, I'm the same. I'm a leadoff hitter. I'm lefty. And I'm decently fast. Um, I want to know your technique for bunting, because that's something I sometimes struggle with. Is like, what's your mental approach, and like, and what are your techniques for bunting? That's awesome. And I could talk. For, that's a great question. I'm glad you asked that. I could go on for years on bunting. Um, I was, uh, I had, I was very blessed to have a father that knew I was going to be short my whole life. 
<laughs> so he, he made sure that I could bunt. Um, when I swear when I was six, seven, six, seven, six years old, man in the backyard, that's all we'd work on. I mean, because bunny makes you a better hitter. You're actually seeing the ball hit the bat. Um, and then I had the privilege in AAA of playing with Brett Butler. I mean, if, if you want to uh, Google Brett Butler after this, I mean, uh, he's not a bad guy to Google. He's one of the best bunner. He's probably the best bunner of all time. He has the major league uh, leading bunts in a season. And, uh, Dodger, I, former yeah, Dodger. Yeah, Dodger. And uh, who else did he play for? He played, he played for, for the Cleveland. Giants. He played for yeah, Cleveland, Cleveland, too, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and Giants. He's more well-known for the, the Giants and the Dodgers. But um, he taught me a way. <laughs> Um, that I still bunt today, and and then third base, um, the, the the best way I can I can put it is stay there. I mean, stay there as long as you can. If you have decent speed to plus speed, you don't you don't have to be getting out of the box as quick as you may think. Um, if you put the ball in a in a position, um, we we try to put it where, where the cut is. There's a circle cut there, probably about three to four feet outside that cut. I don't care if you're Pablo Sandoval, you're going to be safe at first base if you can put the ball there because no one's going to get there. I don't care if they play you three or four steps in the grass. If you can put the ball there consistently over and over again, no one's going to throw you out. Um, I try to work on – one second. I got a bat in here. I'll show you. Perfect. <laughs> okay. One thing I can always say is when, you, uh, when you're trying to bunt, you want to work – Oh, I need a baseball. I don't have a baseball, but I have a, I have a this ball. This is fantastic. Okay, when you're trying to bunt, let me see if I can hold this thing up. Let's see, here. That's good enough. When you're trying to bunt, I always have my hand about label high like this and always have those fingers tucked back. And I don't even use this hand. I, I'm about like, I'm almost like, Real loosey goosey with Sam because when you hit the ball, that's the sound you want it to hear. It's gonna deaden when you have this loose and this is tight. When we practice, we don't even use our bottom hand ever. We just we just literally bunt just like this, bunt with one hand, and that just teaches you how to deaden the ball. Also, you always want to work this end. You want to work the end of the uh, end of the bat. When you hit it here, it's gonna be too hard. Always gonna be too hard. You, um, the the perfect bunts are usually the actually the baseball's halfway off the end of the bat, um, and that's going to give you that deadening deadening sound from the strong grip here, and like I said, loose here. This is just your steer, and then like I said, hitting the, about halfway off the end of the bat is always going to deaden that ball perfectly. And, and like I said, I, I'm sorry. Did, does that change with a metal bat? No. I mean, if you if you it's same thing. If you swing with the metal bat and it hits off the end of the bat, it's gonna ring your fingers and it's not gonna go as far, right? So right. that's what we want when we bunt. We're, we want kind of a deadening, almost like a thud sound with a wood bat. And I'm sure it's the same with a metal bat. Um, like I said, that's just the most dead part of the bat that we can find. Um, so like I said, the thing is, I always like I said, we're we're coming here with a a, a stiff uh, left hand as a left hand hitter, and like I said, you're just gonna steer with this one, and Try to deaden it as, as good as well as possible, and I always go distance over direction. I think uh, any bunner would say that. I don't care if it's right out of, the, out of the pitcher. I mean, if it's if it's two feet from the cut of the grass, no one's going to get to it. I, like I said, I don't I don't think anybody's going to get to it, even if it's to the left or the right. Like I said, if it's two or three feet from the cut of the grass, it doesn't really matter where it is. It's going to be a hit. So, the farther left, of course, is is bet the better. But like I said, if it's right at the pitcher. Um, unless he's a very athletic pitcher, it's it's probably still going to be a hit. It, that's awesome. And the, the one thing that, that you said that I really like, um, a lot of times with younger left-handed bunters, they, they want to run out of the box before yes. they even get it down. And that that pretty much takes away half the plate. They can't bunt pitches on the outer half of the plate. They can only bunt that inside strike. So staying in the box and getting it down, um, that's key. I like that. Yeah, I mean, uh, Brett Butler always told me, do it like a sack on both ends. You know, when you sack bunt, it should be the exact way as your, your hit, bunt for a hit for me. And that's how I do. I mean, I, I my bunt for hits are sacks, and my sacks are bunt for hits. I stay in just as long on both. I don't switch. I don't modify it. I can be safe on both, you know. You're going to stay in there long enough. It's not going to be a bunt for a hit. You're going to stay in there long enough. You're literally going to see it down, and if you put a good bunt down, you select a good pitch, it's going to be a hit. It doesn't matter. So 
like I said, it, it's kind of a weird, weird theory. But like I said, if you can put it where you want it, it you can sit there and have a sandwich and run, and you'll be fine. <laughs> That's awesome. Anyone else have uh, have another que question for? Uh, he he's in he's in big time form yeah, right now. I have a question. Yeah, <laughs> I got a question for Franco. Adam, what's, what's, a, this is a two-part question. Uh, sure. When when did you know that you were good enough to play professional baseball? And then when you started, when you were playing professional baseball, when did you know that you were good enough to to make it to the big leagues? Um, I I knew I was good enough to play professional when I put on a Missoula Osprey uniform in rookie ball. <laughs> to be completely honest with you, I, I was always a, a, a kind of under undersized, overlooked guy, so I never really had that uh, that growing up of always um, being in the spotlight of that that uh, top prospect or that the big high school player. Um, I was never uh, I was never thought after like that. So really, when I when I put a professional uniform on, I was like, oh, maybe I can play, maybe I can do this. You know, this is. This is pretty neat. I, I think this is uh, something. I, I mean, I've always wanted to do it, but you know, it was, it was something I never. Um, I thought I maybe could do it, but I wasn't sure. Um, and then, of course, when I went to the big leagues, it was. Uh, I don't. I don't even think I still know if I can play in the big leagues. I still got to figure that out. <laughs> um, I've got a That's year awesome. or so under my belt, but uh, um, it's something I still need to work on. And uh, uh, those guys are good up there. You know, it's, it's not a day goes by that I'm not amazed by the the talent and the. Uh, the consistency of play up there. Um, so I, I say that kiddingly. I mean, in, in, in all all seriousness, you know, I think we're all big league players as long as we can. We put the time and the work in, uh, and and get there and, and stay there. So. Well, awesome. and for everyone that knows Eaton, knows that he plays the game with a confidence <laughs> that is unheralded. And I I think say what you will, eat or laugh, but I think that I mean just. Knowing that you're good enough to at least have a chance of being the best player on the field every time you step on a field goes. I mean that that goes a long way. Sure, yeah. I mean, uh, it's uh, that was always a tough thing for me is to ba balance the cockiness and the uh, the confidence and, and and mix in a little bit of respect. You know, um, there's a there's a way to go about with swagger. You know, you always hear that word swagger and confidence. Um, but also respecting the game and respecting your teammates and, and respecting the uh, opposition. Um, and, and that took me a little while to get used to. You know, I've always been small, so I've always had that kind of that chip on my shoulder. But um, it will get you a long way. You know, even if you're not the best player, if you can think you're the best player, you're going to do uh, well beyond uh, what your means are. So I, I definitely think that confidence goes a long way. Yeah, and, I mean, that's something we've talked about a ton these last couple of weeks is, you know, overcoming – you know the the failure that the game has on a regular basis, and you know being able to step in that box with with that with that swag when you're 0 for four and feel the same as you know when you're two for two or whatever. Um, yeah. That's, yeah, that's I mean that's that's a big that's a big key. I think that uh, I mean Yogi Berra said it best when he what do you say that. Uh, was 75% of the game or 90% of the game's mental and the other half's physical? Mental. Yeah, oh, yeah. 90% of the game is mental, the other half's physical. Yeah. And and I I'm not kidding. You know, they they doesn't go by. I think uh, the guys in the big leagues, you know, they um, what separates good players from great players is all it is is what's up here in uh, in the mental state. You know, a guy that can go over. Over 25, which it happens to everybody. Votto had a stretch there. You know, Phillips has stretches here, and uh, guys in Cincinnati. I mean, uh, Craig Beltron, uh, Belt. You know, all the guys have stretches where it's just like pool holes at the beginning of the season have stretches like that. But how they bounce back, how they can figure it out and get out of it quicker is what separates everyone. You know, from uh, from a mediocre major league player. And it's always a good again practicing it now. You know, taking swings yep. in the cage is not getting frustrated. Understanding it's a process. Is a, is always a good thing, and uh, and practice it. Like I said, it's only going to help you in the future, and and uh, and better games ahead. So, dude, that's awesome. Really appreciate you popping popping in for a little bit. That no was problem, uh, man. that was gold. Anytime we can get a bat and a lacrosse ball going, <laughs> beautiful. This is, well, this is my family's. This isn't even mine. It's Detroit Tigers. <laughs> I love your family. Just has random bats lying around. That's fantastic. <laughs> they got a, they got a ton. Of, they got Gibby up on the wall. You know, being in from Michigan, there it's oh, got all yeah. kinds of crazy stuff on the wall. It's awesome. 
Oh, fantastic. <laughs> cool, man. All right. Well, thanks for swinging by. Have a good nope. night. No cool. problem. Hey, if you guys have any questions or anything, follow me on Twitter. And, and like I said, send me a message. I'd be more than happy to talk to you guys. And uh, like I said, reach out to me and don't be afraid, okay? Cool. Right, thank you. Okay. Take thanks, care, Adam. Guys. Appreciate it, man. Right. Later, man. Peace. <laughs> All right, fellas, I can't, I can't top that. So um, we, we will go through questions, but that, that, that's about as good as it gets. He's a Adams. I mean, he's a stud baseball player, but he's a, he's a great dude. So um, definitely, definitely hit him up on Twitter if you have something for him, and he's, he's really good at responding to that kind of stuff. But he, uh, he was like a twenty-something round draft pick, worked worked his way all the way up to AAA and then won um, like the batting title at AAA and was the MVP of the league and then they, they had to bring him up. But he's just one of those guys that didn't sign for much money um, but was just a hard worker and one of those guys that was just sometimes came off as really cocky but he was just a really confident uh, ball player and that's that served him that served him well. So. Um, yeah, he's a, he's a stud. So, all right, I do want to get to a few of you guys' other questions. So let's uh, let pick your number one question that you got on your list. Uh, hopefully, Adam just just uh, hammered out a couple a couple of good answers for you. Um, and let's let's try to rock through um, any of the pressing questions. Austin, feel free to type yours in. Bobby, type it in too. Um, if you got it, and we'll just Mark and I will start hammering away and answering whatever we can. Chris, did that did that bunting help? That was the, that was the greatest. That was great. I like that a lot. Yeah, it's pretty sweet. I I didn't even. I've never I've never heard that. Like I think yeah, that's sweet. Um, cool. All right, Chris. Well, since you're since you're far left on my screen, why don't you why don't you start, and we'll we'll work our way work our way down. Okay. Um, I had I normally don't have this problem, but I had it on two two weeks ago. Yeah. And there was one game where the umpire basically almost wouldn't grant me time in the box. Like I, I would, I would start to, you know, get my process in the box going, and I would look up, and the pitcher's already in his motion. And I mean, obviously, it threw me off a little bit. I mean, and like I kept trying to like hold my hand out more distinctly so the umpire would see. Yeah. And in cases like that, how do you still gain control of the at bat when like certain situations like that? May arise. Um, I'm gonna wait and answer that. Okay. Uh, uh, one sec. I'm gonna text Adam and see if he'll come answer that. Because it's really funny you say that. All right. Who has another question while we're waiting? I have one. <clears throat> yeah. Go for it. Um. What uh in high school would staying a center fielder put me at a disadvantage instead of playing like shortstop or the middle infield? Um, not necessarily. Why would you? Why would you? Why would you think that? I've been told that you know they colleges want to look for the shortstops that are utility players because the shortstops are considered the most athletic on the field. Um, it, oh, I, what's up? I couldn't. I I couldn't answer this question. I need. I really needed your help, and it was Quinn. I apologize for cutting you off. We'll get. We'll get back to that. But um, Chris, will you ask your question, please? Okay. I, uh, I was cracking up, Eat. I'm sorry. Uh, two weeks ago, in a, in a game of mine, I was. I was going to the box and I was calling time to the umpire, you know, to get my uh, oh my gosh to set up in the box. I did dude, I did not tell him to say no. that. No, I promise. And, uh, all right, so I'm assuming you know the rest. I think so. Did, did um, you... Yeah, he wouldn't grant me time basically, and when I would look up, the pitcher would be in his motion. And I tried to hold my hand out more distinctly every time, to show time, but it, it never. I never. I was never granted it. So, what's the question? Um, how do you how do you like stay in control of the bat even when <laughs> when you can't 
He hit a homer. Can you just yeah? <laughs> can you just tell you your story real quick, and then and then and then that'll that'll be it. I'll, I'll, first of all, you should probably just go up to the umpire and be like, "Hey, can I have a second? Or ask the catcher, "Hey, can I have a second? That's what you probably should do. But go ahead, Franco. <laughs> no, I want to know what you. I want you to tell him what you did because this is ha- this happened on YouTube, and I'll have to I'll have to send you guys. But this happened to to Adam. And I would like you to explain that. That's it. hilarious that he brought that up. I know, right <laughs> after you left, too. Um, I was in uh, rookie ball, and uh, there was a their starting pitcher, and he just, again, he was just quick pitching the heck out of all of us. And, and uh, you know, a couple of guys in front of me, I was a three-hole hitter at the time. I wasn't a leadoff hitter yet. So um, it was a second time around. I, th- I think our leadoff hitter, our second, our two-hole hitter just was rushed real bad. So I came up. And I asked the umpire, "Can I have? Can I have a second? You know, can I have a little bit of time?" Um, the guy said, but I didn't say quick pitching, but I was like, "Can I have a second? He said, "Yeah, sure." So, um, I get, I put my head down, touch the plate, and I get up, and I, he sets, and all of a sudden he holds for a long time. So I start calling time, like time, time, because I'm thinking he's going to deliver the pitch quick, and he holds for a long time. So I call time, and he holds. I call time, and he holds. I think I called time again, and he held again. And the uh, or the, um, the umpire never granted me time, so I leg kicked and swung as hard as I can at the pitch. And I think it's the farthest ball I ever hit and did something I shouldn't have done, and that was look back at the umpire and jabbed a little bit at him and then ran around the bag, <laughs> ran around the bags. But uh, not something you should do. It, like I said, it's on YouTube, um, but uh, I wouldn't recommend that way. <laughs> I'll have to get. I'll have to. We'll put the link up later. <laughs> that's that's one way. That's one way to handle it. Yes, but I, yeah, be a little more respectable. And if you hit the homer, just just start running. Don't you don't have to. I never do that again, and I won't do that again. That was that wasn't something I should have. I showed myself up. That wasn't nice. <laughs> <laughs> that was literally the first question after you left. That's great. Yeah. Uh, that is that's great. Awesome. There's no better person to answer that question. Than <laughs> Adam Eaton. So, good. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, so either either politely ask the umpire to have a little more time or just crow hop in the, like, happy get more <laughs> style and hit the ball as far as you can. So. Yes. And, well, then, we- and then it'll walk around the bases. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that'll be that'll be next week's how to pimp a home run and yeah we'll work on that later but for now awesome all right we'll we'll, we'll let you, we'll let you go thanks okay. for coming back for that no problem yes take care all right see you man see you. Right. um Chris I I will send you guys the link it's it's pri- it's priceless it's ridiculous he asked for time hits a bomb, and tur- doesn't even start running, just turns around and starts talking to the umpire before he starts running at all. Um, yeah, let me know how that goes when you do that next time, please. I will. All right. Um, Quinn, to answer your question, um, yeah, generally shortstops are, you know, are athletic and, and the coaches like recruiting shortstops to play different positions. Um, by no means does that mean that uh, if you're at a different position that that's you know a huge negative or red flag. Um, center fielder is also a position that coaches view as very um, like athletic position that um, you know that they like recruiting because generally center fielders run well and all that kind of stuff. Um, where do you primarily play again? Center. Center. Yeah. Do you have you played much infield at all? I used to play a lot of infield, but then once I got in high school, I well for for high school ball I played third base, which kind of sucked. It was hard, but um for my club team I play center. Yeah, well, you know, really, if you're a good solid ball player, wherever you are on the field, you're gonna stand out and you're gonna get you're going to get recognition. So if you're going to be a center fielder, be the best darn center fielder you can. And um, 
you know, the fact that you're playing infield in high school and center field in college, you know, you can put that on your, you know, in your questionnaire that you play multiple positions, this, that, and the other. So um, those are all good things, but I wouldn't be too, I wouldn't be too worried about it. You know, there's, there can only be one shortstop on every team, so um, it's more important just being a standout player wherever, wherever you are on the field. Right. So, I wouldn't, I wouldn't sweat it. Um, any other questions, fellas? Just throw them out. Austin, feel free to type in anything if you got it over there. Um, I typed mine in. Okay. Oh, you did. Will you go over the recruiting process and what you went through? Um, yes. This could be a whole, this could be like a whole night thing. Um, we're actually Mark and I are doing a, a six week course on this for another group, um, but we'll give you the quick overview. Um, trying to think, do you have a specific question about the recruiting process? Like, how did they did they contact you or did you contact them? Okay, yes. Um, all right, I'm very passionate about this because I think there's a lot of awful recruiting information out there, and um, a lot of people will tell you, like, just play well and coaches will come find you, or just keep going to showcase after showcase after camp after showcase and, and coaches will, will come see you. Now, the problem with, well, there's a lot of problems with that, um, especially, you know, there's a lot of showcases that coaches are only there because they're paid to be there or, um, you know, a lot of coaches go to showcases just to make money, not to actually recruit, or sometimes they'll just be the volunteer assistant from a college who doesn't really have a whole lot of recruiting pull in that program anyways. Um, and then also there's a lot of showcases that, you know, claim to have a good amount of exposure or whatever and, and they just don't or coaches don't show up who are supposed to be there, whatever. Um, the best way to go about doing it, uh, the recruiting process is, is like being proactive and uh, kind of taking control of it yourself. So five steps, I would write, the, I'd write these down um, because, you know, we can, uh, I'm happy to help with more detail, but, but the recruiting process that works is one, you find out what level of college baseball is realistic for you. Um, talk to your coaches, um, you know, kind of look at your teammates, the players that you've played against um, that, that have gone on to play college baseball. Um, go to a local college game. You know, if you, if you think you're D1, um, you know, go to your local D1 college and watch some of their games. Watch them take the EP, kind of take an honest assessment um, of those guys. And granted, you, you know, a lot of those sophomore, junior, seniors have had a couple extra years to develop physically. Um, but more, more like look at the skill set and, and whatnot. Go see a D2 game. Go see a D3 game. Kind of familiarize yourself with uh, the level of play. And so find out a level that's realistic for you, D1, D2, D3, whatever. Um, then <clears throat> find, you know, a list of schools in that area that are the right fit for you academically, uh, size-wise. You know, if you want to go to a big school, a small school, whatever it is, Find about 20 schools that kind of fit your fit your bill. Um, then, so if you if you do your you talk to your coaches, you look at things and you think, hey, I I people are kind of telling me I'm D2. Um, when you make your list of 20 schools, make sure you throw some D1 schools in there. You know, make sure you throw a couple, maybe a couple D3 schools that have good programs that you know that you've heard good things about or whatever in there. So put a balance. I, I mean, don't don't pigeonhole yourself into what other people say because you never really know. Um, but but just make the core focus what's realistic. Um, so then once you once you uh, find out what level is realistic for you, you make your list of colleges. Then you gotta make your skills video. Um, make it in practice, like just practice practice or like on your side so like your your highlight video not in-game footage um, for hitters it'll be like five or six five or six good swings 
from like the front of you hitting live VP. So five or six swings from the front, and then five or six swings, five or six swings from the back, um, and that will that will be your hitting portion, and then some you know a minute of you fielding if you're an infielder fielding different ground balls a couple each way if you're an outfielder taking a few fly balls and and making the throws home or to third base um, and that's it like your skills video should be like two to four minutes um, and then at the beginning of your skills video you should have a page saying like your name graduation date uh, GPA test scores and then Whatever, if you're a fast guy, make sure you put your 60-yard dash time on there. If you're a, um, you know, if you throw throw hard, you know, put on there that you throw 90 miles per hour. What, whatever it is, any any things that stand out. Just remember that stats are pretty overrated when it comes to the whole college thing because it, they don't really mean anything to coaches. You can put it on there that you know if you hit 350 or better, maybe put that on there. Um, but but kind of chill out on, on putting tons of stats in there because it's all kind of relative and really coaches just want to see your athletic ability, your arm action, uh, your swing, that kind of stuff. So all right, so once we have we have our list, we know we know what level is realistic. We have our list. You have your video. Then you send your video. You email all the college coaches on your list and. Um, you pretty much say, hey, my name is such and such, graduate in 14, 15, whatever, uh, really interested in your baseball program, here's my skills video, please let me know um, if, you know, if you'd like to have a, another conversation or, or a copy of my, of my uh, game schedule or whatever. Then you're going to have to follow up with coaches. So you send out to your original list. Some might get back, might not get back to you right away, so then you re-email them a week later or two weeks later just to kind of check in. If they're still on, on not responding or uh, if they're still not responding, then you can call them and just kind of check in and say, hey, my name is so-and-so. Just wanted to follow up on an email I sent you. If they say thanks but no thanks or we're not recruiting center fielders this year or whatever the deal is, then you cross them off your list and you put another school on there. So this kind of sounds like a lot of work, and it is, but it is a bajillion times better than just sitting back and hoping that coaches come find you and um, or that you have the showcase of your life and, and, and they see you. Like... That works for some guys, but really that usually works for the guys that are have a big tool. Um, the guys that run super fast, 60-yard dash time, showcases are great for them. The guys that throw 90 miles per hour, showcases are great for them. But everyone else, just like the good, solid players, um, it's just a much more difficult uh, to go to showcases and stand out and really get the attention you know, that, that you can get sending your own video. So the whole thing revolves around being proactive, sending out your own emails, and interacting with coaches until you find like the right fit. Um, if you guys, if any of you guys are like really interested and you're doing this right now, junior, juniors and seniors, um, let me know. Send me an email. Mark and I are doing a, uh, a six-week course on just this, like how to do your highlight video, how to do your whatever and we'll give you guys a massive discount if you want to if you want to get in on our um, on a six week course but um, if not I mean that's totally cool but I'd follow those five steps that I just said and that's that's really how you, you make your own luck so to speak um, my experience was kind of somewhere in between um, I was kind of proactive I was kind of I kind of got lucky um, just the right coach saw me on the right day uh, at Miami, and um, <clears throat> like the way I fielded ground balls, and they offered me a scholarship without even seeing me swing the bat, which um, you know was fine. He wanted a shortstop that he could trust in the field, and figured the the bat was something that would come along later. Um, but uh, one last thing I'll say about that: uh, one of the kids I worked with this past summer, he he played on this high school JV team as a junior 
and then played on the summer B team. And but he had really good hands, uh, just kind of a skinny kid that hadn't really fully developed. And um, I worked with him. We made his video. Uh, we started sending it out, and and I told him like, man, I mean, you, you have you're a really good fielder. You're a solid, um, you know, just a solid ball player. You're just going to get better. Like, I really think if you're proactive about this, there'll be some schools that will be interested in you. And so he just, this was like three months ago, we had this conversation. I worked with him, and he just signed a scholarship at a D2 school like two days ago. So um, it's really, it's really mad. And he's not a showcase guy. Like, that, the first thing I told him was stop going to showcases because that's not, that's not how you're going to stand out. Um, and he started doing the videos and, and emailing coaches and, and found found coaches that needed a good, solid shortstop, and that was that. So um, I would just encourage you guys to be really, really proactive uh, throughout the recruiting process and, and kind of take take charge um, from the get-go. That's a super long answer, but I wanted to – it's pretty important, so I wanted to give you guys the full, the full mini scoop, I guess, would be that. Um, does that help? A little bit? Cool. All right. I'll, uh, I'll answer any more questions, uh, pressing questions you guys have. I know we started a little bit late tonight. So anything else? All right. What, one more? They will have one more. We'll do one more dying question. Yeah, Bobby. Bobby's typing. What score we have? Oh my gosh, it's six nothing. Bobby. Steven drew hit a bomb. Did he really? What? Yep. He's so not supposed to be sixteen. Yeah, he's not supposed to be hitting. Crazy. Yeah, Bobby. Talk about breaking with a new team. So pretty much like breaking in with a new team, new teammates, new coaches, that kind of stuff. Yeah, man. Um, always tough. I think, uh, you know, the, the same goes with, you know, going to a college baseball program, um, when you go to a new summer team or whatever, you got new teammates, new coaches. Uh, I think one, a few things that go a long way. One is making sure you introduce yourself to everyone right off the bat, which seems kind of like obvious, but um, you know, just shaking your coach's hands, introducing yourself, getting to know your teammates a little bit, um, and then working hard is the best way to kind of establish yourself as uh, just as a good teammate and a good player, like. Just making sure you're the guy that's busting it, that you're running hard base to base, that you're, um, you know, diving for balls and, and and doing everything you can. So from the from the baseball perspective, the whole hustle and and kind of establishing yourself as a, you know, as a passionate ball player is going to give your all. Uh, that's a the easiest way to uh, kind of get in well with with a new team and new teammates. Uh, Brooksy, I know. You want to talk about this? You you played on what three different teams in a span of three years or something like that? Yeah, um, I would say getting you know trying to get as familiar as you can with how uh, the program does things. Cause each program is going to have a different philosophy, um, and each yeah each pro program is going to have a different approach. And I think it's important that you understand that uh, you. You want to get into into the flow of things, you know. You want to eventually be able to do your own thing, like understand what you're, what you know, being comfortable with with uh, bringing what you can that's unique to the game, but not necessarily stick out as a as a sore thumb or to be perceived as a cancer. Um, so I think when, when you're going into a no a new program, you want to be humble. Uh, but you want to also kind of have that swagger about you, kind of like what we talked about uh, earlier. In this I hear, I'm hearing an echo. Yeah. Um, okay. 
better. But yeah, so when you're when you're going into a new new program, you also want to want to consider that there's probably going to be guys who uh, who've been there for for a while. You want to respect that. You know, I think I think that goes a long way as well. Um, and then whenever you get to the point where you have a little bit of experience uh, and a little bit of clout, you can kind of contribute to the team uh, with the experience and the knowledge that that you learn. So I think when just just to kind of like tie it all in, I think breaking into a new team is a perfect opportunity to kind of be humble, uh, take in and learn as much as you can, and then when the time is right, contribute what's unique to you to the program. That's good stuff, Brooksy. I couldn't have said it better myself. Bobby, does that help? <laughs> Only one thumbs up, but that's He's I think speechless. That's good. <laughs> awesome. Um, all right, fellas. Anything else before we wrap it up? Okay. Um, all right. You guys have my email. Um, I want you to stay in touch. If stuff comes up, uh, you know, over the next year, two years, whatever, uh, you know, let us know. Uh, Mark and I want to want to hear from you guys. We want to hear how things are going, what's working, what's not. Um, this is, uh, you know, the fact that you guys stuck with it for, for six weeks is is big and says a lot. It says that you're serious about the game of baseball. It says you're serious about your baseball future, and, uh, and that's awesome. I mean, that's encouraging to me. That's encouraging to Mark, and it's just, it's exciting to kind of see you guys taking those next steps. Uh, you know, to just to be better ball players. So, um, be sure to work, keep that toolbox swing going. Work on our visualization, and then really hammer down that in-game um, hitting routine. Those are the things that are going to last. Those are the things that are going to um, to be a real asset to you guys in the future when you're able to replicate that over and over and kind of become second nature. Um, it was great having. Uh, having Adam Eaton on tonight. So a lot of the stuff that he said is stuff that we've been talking about for the last five weeks and and um, you know he definitely added some good stuff to that as well. So uh, yeah, I had a blast hanging out with you guys. Uh, look forward to hearing hearing some cool stories and moving forward and and uh, like we said earlier, feel free to reach out to uh, to us at any time and we want to keep keep being a resource um, into the future. So Thanks, uh, thanks for sticking with everything. Thanks for sticking with all of our tech issues. But I think I think we uh, we ironed a lot of stuff out and and uh, still still made some made some good progress. So thanks again for everything, fellas. Look forward to uh, hearing some good some good stories down the line. Yeah, me too. Yeah, me too. Yeah, Brooksy, thank you as well, man. Appreciate yeah, man. it. Yeah, my pleasure. My pleasure. Good. All right, fellas. Take care, guys. Enjoy the last guys. couple innings. Austin, thank you, man. Thank, thank you, guys. Thank all you guys. A little upset Quinn didn't play his drum set for us tonight, but it's all right. Maybe next time. Hey, there it is. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Cool. All right, fellas. Um, yeah, have a great night, and uh, until next time.